My name is Jonica Gibson. I'm a civil and coastal engineer, mother of three, and I've been an engineer for almost 20 years, and I love engineering. I get to work on interesting projects in the office, outside of the office, work with a team of engineers to provide services to our clients, and, um, but have fun with it. I chose engineering because of my interest in math and science, and also um, inspired by my father who suggested engineering in the first place. First, I did not know what engineering was until my father explained it to me. And um, one of the things that he said is that he was a scientist, and he said that he worked with engineers and they tended to get paid more. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, okay, so that, that was a bit of a motivation as well. Um, so I chose engineering and, and civil because of my love of math and the environment, um, and then engineering for the hopes that it could provide a stable job. Um, when I finished college, my first job was with a consulting firm, and I think the advantage I had there and, and being in the Washington, D.C. area is that we had a large contract with the federal government. And in civil engineering in general, I always tell people that there's such job security in engineering because everything that we design is going to have to be maintained or have to um, be upgraded because it's man-made and it's at some point going to deteriorate. So that provides some job security. Um, but my first job out of school um, provided uh, a lot of technical exposure and experience that um, I still use in my career day to day. And um, it, it grew over time from being a technical person to managing tasks to becoming a project manager and then a group leader over that time. Um, and I find that you know when you're an engineer, even though you love the technical work, in order to grow in your experience and grow to um, take on a bigger role in your company, you have to work outside of your comfort zone. And that is going to get you at the level that um, is appropriate for you and you're going to get the promotions and um, find yourself in a higher position when you gain that experience and, and just keep striving for more, not necessarily for salary, but more, um, more responsibility and more oversight. And that's going to provide a, a very um, successful career in anything that you do. I like my job because I get to work with other people every day and collaborate on very interesting projects. And um, that human interaction for me really inspires me to work hard and work, um, you know, work towards a solution with other people. Um, and I love that I get to still do math. Um, I always loved that since I was a, a child. And um, so just mixing the two um, just makes my job fun. When I first started as a civil engineer, my typical day at work was um, pretty regimented because I was given a stack of cases to work on um, by my project manager. And I had had all the appropriate training um, going into my job. So I usually organize my day to you know set goals to get through a certain amount of work that day where I did work independently um, to work with individual stakeholders or clients on um, particular cases which involved communication um, reviewing uh, technical analyses, reviewing mapping, doing research um, but I had people that I could go to to ask questions when I got uh, hung up on an issue. Um, and I learned a lot in that first two years of working um, where I got comfortable over time um, just becoming more independent in what I was doing. Um, and then that evolved to um, working on larger projects with a larger team more directly with a project manager. And again, normally I'd be assigned to oversee a task where perhaps engineers would be reporting to me and I would oversee a technical aspect of that project. And after doing that for a few years, you gain more responsibility. I gained more responsibility as a project manager, assistant project manager, where I was tracking schedules and budgets, and along with that, overseeing technical work done by more junior engineers. And 
you know, 10, 15 years into my career, that, you know, grew into even a bigger role where I was overseeing a whole team of engineers and project managers who were working on various projects. Um, while I was still doing some technical work and doing technical reviews, um, most of the day-to-day -day work was more management of that staff to make sure there was enough work coming in, that we had enough people to work on that work, um, and involved recruiting. Um, staff and also reporting to upper management for the, our office, which is a business, <laughs> and we have to be profitable um, to make sure that we are um, adhering to the obligations of our contract, billing our clients, and um, getting our work done on time and, and doing it well. So, um, you know, in a you know over the progression of my career, I've you know, been able to grow in my experience that I feel like today when I look back um, has been so valuable because when you become, you know, you start off as a technical person and um, go into project management, um, your day does change a lot, but um, it's a pretty natural progression if you really learn what you're supposed to at the level that you're at. What I want people to know about engineering is that while I love what I do and I love the people, um, there are times that you, know, you work on things that you're not so crazy about, but every experience that you get at your job in engineering or any job is a good experience and you should always do the best at it because there's always something you can learn from that experience, whether it's, I know I don't like doing this, but the exposure is good, so if I manage a project where that's an aspect of it, you have that experience and you can identify with that portion of the work for the people who are doing it. Um, and um, you have to find what you enjoy and, and what you're good at when you're working. And um, you know, you're, you're not gonna be talented in every area unless you're a very special person. But um, the beauty of working in engineering and collaborating with people is that there's gonna be all sorts of talents and capabilities in your group. And if there's something that is not your forte or strong suit, um, someone else can most likely fill that role. Um, but what you can do as an engineer is just realize what your talents are and use that to your advantage. As a mother of three girls, I think it's very important to expose them to engineering and the type of work that I do. And one of the things that I do maybe day to day is to, when we're out driving or going for a walk and it's raining, I'm like, oh, hey, look at that stream, look at that bridge, and, and just try to get them to notice what's going on around them, and then try to tie that back into what I do at work. And um, it is interesting, I think some of the things that they're teaching our girls in school, in elementary and middle school, is STEM-based, which is wonderful. And I am also finding it in children's books. In fact, last night I was reading a book to my five-year-old, and it said, um, and it's about a little girl who said, I can be anything, I can do anything. And one of the things she said she could do is, I can be an engineer. And my five-year-old said, you're an engineer, aren't you? And I was like, yes, I am. And so having that conversation with them is good. Um, to expose them, expose them when they're young so it becomes a part of the normal conversation. Um, but in addition, one of the most rewarding things I've done is um, to go into the schools and speak to children about engineering on career day. And so I think, especially for civil engineering and the type of work that I do, it's best to show them instead of just talking about it because it can be kind of lost if you just um, talk about words and, and but showing pictures or, or doing a watershed model which is what I've done um, for several years at my daughter's school has uh, shown the kids exactly what engineering can look like and um, that has been rewarding for me as well because I just love the questions that I get and, um, and, and I like to hear what kids are thinking and, and kind of hopefully inspire them to think about engineering as a career or as something they could pursue. I would say to any woman who, or any person who's planning to start a family and work at the same time is that it is, it does get hard <laughs> to balance family and work life, um, but everything is temporary. So there are times um, where things are really crazy in your career and crazy at home. Um, 
The thing that I had to remind myself when I got through those times is that everything is temporary. It's not going to be like this forever. Um, and that's life. Um, you're going to hit highs and lows. And what kept me going is that you're an example to your children. And so if they see mom or dad working hard um, and, and being home when they can, um, if you talk to them about what you're doing and why it's important to you, um, it, it makes it a little better for everybody. If there's some way you can involve them, if it means that they have to sit and watch you while you're doing your work, or you know, any way that you can actually include your children is beneficial to you and your kids, because they feel like, wow, I'm helping dad or mom with their work. I feel important. Um, if they can see you in action, that's going to make them appreciate how hard you're working and, and be an inspiration to them. The college classes that I use the most in my career are, there are two. Um, one's very technical, it was uh, hydraulics, because <laughs> I do riverine hydraulic modeling. Um, and the second is uh, my technical writing course. Um, the hydraulics course is just a very technical you know, hydraulic modeling course. It's what I did day to day when I first started working. It was highly valuable when I first started working because the technical training that I got on the job came easier to me. Um, and I just always liked doing that work. So I did well in the class. And that actually is what led me to pursue my master's degree. Uh, the technical writing course that I took was very valuable because I was a terrible writer and um, and I struggled in that class and it but it made me confront that fear um, uh, and I still think back to being terrified of having to not only write technical work but also present and speak in public and um, when I first started working there was a lot of technical writing because we prepared a lot of correspondence for our our client to stakeholders. And um, I did hold on to my technical writing book to help me with um, writing some of that correspondence. And, and um, it, it helped me later in my career because a lot of reports are required along with the work that we do and communicating what we have completed, um, not only to our client who's technical, but to stakeholders who are not technical, being able to speak on terms that uh, the general public can understand about the work that we're doing was so important um, to understand the difference. So um, those are the two that were most valuable to me. It's a very interesting story how I got into coastal engineering. Um, I've always loved the beach and going to the beach, and um, but it's not something I thought of initially when I chose civil engineering. Um, one of my favorite classes as an undergrad was hydraulic modeling, and my professor was happened to be a coastal engineer. And he noticed that for every homework assignment, instead of doing the calculations by hand, I would write a program to solve it. And it was partially laziness, but also because I love programming. And um, so one day after class, um, he said, hey, I can tell you like modeling. Have you considered coastal engineering? Because we do a lot of hydraulic modeling there. We just add waves to it. and. Um, so he encouraged me to take a introduction to coastal engineering course, and that was as an undergrad, and that was my first exposure to coastal engineering. Um, and so when I was applying to grad schools, I was looking at coastal programs and hydraulic modeling programs, and um, I ended up choosing coastal because my future advisor, the same hydraulic professor, told me that. Not only am I good at the modeling, and it, it's a small field, and there aren't a lot of people in it, so it's a nice niche and, and extra talent that would make me stand out. But he actually said, because I was a minority and a woman, I would really stand out because people would remember me. And uh, that always stuck in my head. And um, But it was true. I um, was the only black female in my graduate program. There were other women there, um, but there were, I was the only American woman in the program. Um, and even though I wasn't the best researcher in that field, um, what I learned is, again, I had a niche for being who I was. 
And so I tried to use that to my advantage. People would remember me. Um, I went to an international conference, and to this day, 20 years later, people are like, oh yeah, I remember meeting you at the International Coastal Engineering Conference in Orlando in 1996, which is a long time ago. <laughs> so it, it's kind of nice that I stood out now. Of course, I would love it if I didn't stand out and there were more minority women in that field, but um, you know, it, it really benefited me in my career, and I enjoy what, I doing, what I'm doing. And, um, that's kind of how I got into coastal engineering. And it, it turned out to be a great um, pursuit because, um, again, I got to continue the hydraulic modeling, just adding waves to it. It, it is a complicated field, um, but I love that I can work on that and work on the riverine studies that I work on together. The skills that I think are most important for work is uh, good communication and um, I guess a little bit of business savvy. <laughs> and of course, the technical background, which I think most people will have when they finish school. But being able to communicate and ask questions when you need to, um, and knowing when to ask questions, um, and, and also kind of putting yourself out there to take a little bit of risk um, and when you're doing your work is going to go very far for anyone in any career, but especially engineering.